Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Feed the Beast Monster. I am your host, Bunny Vulture, and this is episode number 18. Uh, today we're going to get uh, delve into some more magic stuff with Thomcraft. Uh, I've done some researching and whatnot uh, off camera, uh, a lot of researching, and that's kind of boring stuff to watch, so I didn't record that. Uh, it's a lot of, you know, going out and getting some research points and clicking on uh, stuff in a little crafting grid, so it wasn't really thrilling to record, so I didn't really record that. Um, right now, I'm starting off here in my little bee tree breeding area. Well, it's not really a, a bee breeding area. It's more of a tree breeding area. Uh, I started off with some oak wood and some birch over there to get some silver lime. And then I've gotten some apple oak and the silver lime, and I gotten a couple cherry things. Uh, so as you can see here, I got uh, some brand, uh, some leaves that are pollenized, I guess, right there. And if I can, yeah, there's one right there that's got a little bit different leaf color texture. So I'm hoping to get some cherry trees out of that, and then progress the cherry trees out to uh, walnut trees, and then progress further into chestnut trees for some seed oil. And whatnot. So, and I, one thing I've uh, come across, and I'll be getting into the bee breeding stuff uh, later on. But if you look up chestnut, Cortla, yeah, maybe that's not the best. There we go, uh, chestnut. And if I click on that, you can get it via this, the sweet chestnut. But then there's this guy, which I just found uh, the other day, the Musitron. And I think this is from G the mod Gendistry. Uh, and I never even, even saw this in here. Uh, and apparently you can get some, you can use basically just RF and Mutagen and put the walnut sapling in there with some hill cherry pollen and the, along with some of this stuff and you get the chestnut. Uh, so that's not bad. Uh, I'm not sure if this is a 100% chance or if this is just a regular chance. But it's a you know it's a machine way a machine way to get the uh, the upgraded uh, saplings that you want from forestry and whatnot. And it looks like mutagen you can get via uh, uranium in a mutagen producer. Some a million RF with uranium gives you a lot of mutagen, and I got plenty of uh, uranium. So I might be doing the machine ways to to breed some stuff. Anyway, just thought I'd you know show that little tidbit of stuff to of things to come. Uh, so what I've done um, here in my little base, uh, I'm not sure if you've seen my little thumbcraft. I think I had this up in the last base. I made a little armor stand so I could uh, quickly switch out to my uh, thaumaturgy robes. I went ahead and made that. Uh, let me pull out my thaumonomicon here, show you what I've got. Uh, basically in the basic stuff here, I went ahead and I got the research expertise, the research mastery. And then over here, I went and got the advanced node tapping, uh, and then the node preserver, which is really important to get. I would actually go if you're start just starting off in Thomcraft. I would definitely go to do the basic stuff first and get the research expertise, and then the research mastery, and then over here to get down to the node preserver. And what this does is when you're using your wand to drain aspects from a node, it always leaves at least one there, so you don't fully drain the node of an aspect, which is really important, so that when you're draining nodes, uh, later on when we want to move a node uh, to our base, uh, there's always at least one left, and then the nodes you know, regenerate their, uh, their V and whatnot. Uh, and then I also got master node tapping, so I pretty much got everything here on the uh, the basic stuff, with the exception of this deconstructing table, and this uh, research duplication, which I don't need right at the moment. Uh, and then I went down into thaumaturgy here, and I researched some of the uh, wand stuff because uh, doing some of the more advanced stuff, you need better wands, and the iron wand just doesn't cut it. Uh, right now, I'm using the gold wand, so I uh, researched the gold. Um, I yeah, I think I use, I got, what do you use the, I think it's used just your basic wand rod, and then I got the uh, gold wand caps. And then I also researched the thaumium caps, uh, but uh, in order to use these, I, I can go ahead and make these now, but as it, here, as it says here, it, um, the regular wand caps are not sufficient, they need to be infused with magical energy, and to do that you need to use infusion, which we haven't started yet. So if we were to look at that, 
Oh, and basically I wanted to use those thalmium wands here on the silverwood wand core so I can make a thalmium capped silverwood wand which has the uh, ability to store 100 V of each of the primal aspects which you know you definitely want to have for making some of the stuff because some of the stuff requires like 70 and stuff like that if we were to look at um, I think it's here is it here on alchemy um, I don't think I researched too much here. Oh yeah, I went and did the Essentia distillation, uh, which we'll need for the uh, infusion, and some warded jars and some tubes and whatnot. Although they've changed the way the tubes work in four one, uh, so I, I think I may be going the golem route, and I think the golem route may be cooler than rather than just have more pipes. I'll leave the pipe stuff to my more technical stuff instead of the magical stuff. Uh, I think it's here on Artifice. Is it here? Um, yeah, I went ahead and got myself some goggles with the revealing. Um, those were real easy to make. I highly suggest getting these as one of your first things to make right after you do the basic stuff. Uh, that way you can see nodes in the world a lot easier rather than peering through a little, you know, window when you're holding it up. It's kind of annoying to fly around with, you know, a little holding the little thing up. Uh, and it's good, and they're not really expensive to make, and you just put them in an arcane workbench, so it's pretty easy to make, and uh, highly worth it. And then after you make that, I would, you know, before you start making too much stuff, I would go ahead and, and research the enchanted fabric, and then because um, that's pretty easy to research, and then start making your uh, thaumaturgy stuff. So that whenever you're making stuff, you get the full V discount, which I believe with uh, the boots, the legs, and the chest, and the uh, goggles are revealing, you're at 10% uh, 10, 10 off. So using the gold uh, gold capped wand and the thaumaturgy robes, you're at 10% off. So you're, you're at 90% cost. And I think when you get the uh, thaumium wand, you're at 85% or maybe less, something like that. Uh, so yeah, definitely worth it. Uh, I also researched the arcane lamps, and I'll show you how I've used those here in a second. And I've researched the infusion, and I think that's probably about it. I haven't gone into anything else. There's, oh, spellbinding cloth. Huh, that's new. I didn't remember looking that out. So a couple other things here that I haven't you know, looked at, but haven't gotten quite in yet because I, I figure that I'll need infusion for that. So in talking about infusion, what we'll need, what you need to get started is you need one runic matrix, uh, one one of these little guys, and that takes some of these arcane stone blocks. And to make those, you just put some stone around a shard of any of your choice, and you get nine of them. Um, so yeah, you need one of those, and... Um, you need some pedestals, and you don't need, depending on what you're making, you may only need two or four. Um, I think in a lot of the setups I've seen, they use six uh, around a setup, and I'll show you how I've got that set up. Uh, but you need you need these six plus one, so you need, you need seven of those. Uh, and this shows you kind of how to make it. So you got these arcane stone bricks, and you make those just by putting blocks in, you know, you get four. It keeps on going back there. So you need those kind of around like that, and then you put the stone blocks on top, and then you put the little runic matrix on top, uh, and kind of, you know, suspended in the air, and then you're able to, you know, click it, and it ends up looking like this little guy. And here's a picture of a of a setup that you can use, you know, little pedestals around like that. But you kind of see how it's, you know, one on this side, one on the opposite side, one on this side, and the one on the opposite side, and then one in the middle. That's kind of how... Thomcraft works. Everything kind of has to be in symmetry. Um, so I'll go ahead and show you down. I've kind of go downstairs and show you what I've got. Um, so we go down here and around back here. And here's the stuff I've got going. So I've got my little setup here, and I've gotten instead of just the the four pedestals, I've gotten six. Uh, so two here. Two on the other side, two on the left, and two on the right. And I also made a alchemical furnace and some arcane alembics to distill all the essentia out. And what I'll end up doing, I think, um, I'm, I, I'm probably not going to have all of these right here. I'm probably going to take a couple of these off and make another arcane furnace and make a couple of these and then use golems to transport all the uh, essentia into warded jars. Uh, I'm trying not to do too much of this here. Uh, probably won't end up doing much of it here actually 
because I, I really want to get into my new base, which I'll show you here. Uh, but I want to show you kind of how you make it. So you just, you know, you're sitting here and you're like, oh, wow, this is kind of cool. But it, it can look cooler. So you just right click that and boom. That's really cool. That's probably one of my favorite looking things in Minecraft right now is just the way that these things curve. You know, everything is so, you know, right angles everywhere. But, you know, this thing is actually curving the texture. That's really cool. And then it's got this little spinning block. So that's really, really cool. Um, so, yeah. So let's... Sh and one of the things I put on my wand to get go, the other thing I made is the up here on thaumaturgy and sorry if i sound a little off today i've got a little bit of a cold um, is the wan foci or foci however you say it <laughs> uh was the wand of equal trade and i'll show you why i wanted to make this uh, essentially what this does is it allows you to um take a block that you want to put down and substitute it for a block that you've selected so on my wand, I have right clicked and chosen dirt as the block I want to replace, say, this wood with. Uh, so I don't have any dirt in my inventory right now. So, but, so let me go ahead and grab a little bit. And if I look at my wand, I am a little low on Perdito and Ordo, but I think that, that should be fine for what I'm going to do. So. Let me take you over to my little marker there. You can see on the screen is my castle marker. And on the screen here in a second, you will see what I've been busy with the last couple days. Oh, wow. Check that out. See through the world. So, yeah. As you can see here from all the progress, I've been quite busy. I think on the last video I had shown you... I'm not sure how much I showed you, but I showed you kind of like this little section here, kind of what I was doing, and I think I had the beginnings of a tower. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it was the full tower yet. Um, it might have been, but I went ahead and continued that all the way down. Uh, made that tower, and over on this side, I've made that tower, and then going further down that tower. Oh, that's what I've used the arcane lamps for is to light up my base and I'm gonna put those in a little bit of a different enclosure uh, I'm gonna make this a little different but not just have those sticking on the wall uh, but I wanted to at least you know get the light going and then this is all gonna be prettied up with the moss stone and other stuff and windows are gonna be here for the path going inside the wall I haven't gotten to that yet uh, but essentially what we wanted to do is say a section like this so right here we have this you know nice cool natural landscape and whatnot going into my castle and all of a sudden we have the exposed stone here well i don't want that you know no one wants that and it'll go and you know i got time for that so we got some dirt and all we got to do is just right click and ta-da that stone is now replaced by the brick or by the dirt and the dirt that we have is or the cobblestone that we replaced it with has gone into our inventory just like that and like that Very cool. So yeah, this is, I've kind of been doing a lot of back and forth charging up my wand and you can see there, uh, if you can kind of see it, I'm not sure what texture would be best for seeing it, probably against the sky. I'm getting, I've used up a good bit of my Ordo and Prodidio. I think it uses, what does it do? It doesn't really show me how much I use on each thing. Uh, but uses a good bit for each little tap that I do. It gets pretty expensive as you go along. Oh, I'm out. So yeah, so I got this wall here too. This is a, this one took a while to build, and then I got this tower over here and this wall here and then finally around the front is the entrance i had a lot of fun <laughs> in the 
in this little area, this was like a huge mountain area, so I just threw a bunch of TNT and started blowing this all up. I figured I didn't want to dig it all out because that just seemed kind of boring. So I threw a bunch of TNT down and just blew everything kind of up in this area. So I wanted to kind of, a little bit of a, a ramped texture or ramped look to it. So I got to, I still got to, you know, mine out some blocks here and there uh, to make it a little bit more natural looking and replace, of course, this all with dirt and whatnot. But I'll get there. This is my little dirt tower so I can get up there and kind of look at how the construction was doing. I just kind of, you know, would fly up there and take a look and make sure everything was looking right. So... You come in here, and I've got my path down. And one of the things I found was I retextured the dirt with the chisel right there. And just by putting dirt in there, you can get some really cool dirt textures. So I'm using the dirt layers one because I thought that looked kind of more like a natural dirt thing. And I didn't really want a dirt brick. Um, I mean, there's these other ones, but those look more as if you're going to, like, you know, stack dirt on top of each other. And then you'd put one of these on top. Um, there's also this one, the crumbling dirt, which isn't too bad. Um, and this, this is actually isn't too bad. The dirt bricks, if you want to use like a brown brick, uh, it's actually not bad at all. Uh, and same thing with these, if you're down like a, maybe like a underground, you know, catacomb type building, those might be kind of cool for that. And of course you got the, the happy dirt with the <laughs> kind of the soul sand look. Um, but then I went ahead and decided to use like these paths from open blocks and the path is pretty easy to make just some uh, yeah just some of your regular old geostrata stuff together and gives you two so I put the dirt and then I put those paths on top of each other and it gives it this nice little road look to it um, rather than the standard just you know a recessed block and then two kind of normal looking things I want to kind of stay with the medieval type road with cobblestone and this kind of gives it a, a cool kind of look and then I use some uh, different cobblestone covers in the French style, I think it's called, on this. Yeah, French cobblestone tiles, yeah, whatever. Um, just a little bit different pattern than the, uh, shoot. I didn't mean to do that. There's a block there now, I can't see it. Where's that one? There it is. Let's repair that. There it is. Come on. There we go. Okay. All fixed. So yeah, I've continued that in and made a little path. And I got some uh, magical crops farms over there. Although that's not how it's going to stay. It's going to... I'm going to have like a little farming area over here. I'm not sure if I'm going to automate that stuff. I may. Um, I'm not sure. Because I don't really go through food a lot. So I don't... I mean, this all right here would make a good bit of food. And I don't really need that much, so I don't know. I think I may just do it for aesthetics and make a little farming thing. I'll have like a little well, and I will put like a little animal thing over here in case I need leather or, you know, bacon, eggs, stuff like that, feathers. So I've started building my building here, and this is what I've been doing for the texture here and columns and whatnot. Uh, this is all mainly done using cobblestone in the chisel mod. Gotta love my chisel mod. Um, so I got some uh, light panels, uh, the regular panels that join for that, the bricks, and then actually these things in here, I was using the um, small cobblestone bricks, uh, but then I'm like, that ah, just doesn't, it, you know, blends too much. It was a little bit too much of the one, this type of gray. So then I looked for a uh, glimmer of light. Huh. Huh. Um, so yeah, I was looking for like a different type of brick to use and I really couldn't decide on one. I, I tried several out and then I came across this uh, brick for magical crops. And what this is, this is a, a coal tinted brick, I believe. Yeah, whoa, whoa, why am I lagging? What's going on? Yeah, so brick, coal tinted. And what that basically is, is just some um, bricks around a coal essence, and then it gives you coal tinted brick. So I thought that looked a little bit more defined for what would be on the inside. And I'm not sure what I'm going to do for here. I might do a simple glass block, or maybe a pane, probably a pane, 
to go on the inside. I'm just not sure which paint to use. So I continue that on up to the top. And then this big guy is going to be where my Thalmcraft area is. Right now I've just kind of got a basic um, tower. <laughs> Nothing special about it. Uh, but I am going to retexture this and kind of wrap, you know, do some wrapping that I have here and do all kinds of stuff. But that'll be down the road. But I, I might just go ahead and make a floor in here and stop my Thalmcraft stuff. But on the entrance here, I've got my signature. Like that. PV Bunny Vulture. And then I just did the, uh, I did the roof last night. And I'm not sure what I'm doing with the front here. Um, I'm not sure. I may just go ahead and fill this in with glass. And then do something else in between there. I'm not really sure yet. Um, but yeah, in, in inside, get under the into the roof where protect, protect us from the rain. I got one of the arcane lamps in here to light it up. And then I haven't uh, finished the interior at all, but I want to get to go ahead and enclose this so it can start actually building some stuff in here. Um, but I've done, this has been, I've did this over the weekend, spent a lot of time uh, building this. But uh, if you, in your builds, if you haven't used it, I cannot recommend this thing enough. This saved so much time. Um, it it is it's just plain unreal yeah, for replication purposes. I mean, for repeating patterns over and over again for just laying, you know, even even the roof. You know, when I had this, you know, staggered style, just by going, you know, clicking and just do, it, it's it's awesome. That's I mean, that's just all it is. It, it's it's awesome. Um, so yeah, that's what I've been kind of doing off camera is been building this little thing. So yeah, wanted to show you guys this and see what you think. Um, this is probably the biggest build I've done so far in Minecraft. So you can see here, oh, that's weird showing the roof, two different ty types of textures. So this is the scale of it. So if we would go up here in this corner, so we're at what, 344 all the way over to... So about a hundred blocks, I, I would say, 344 from middle to middle, sort of, from middle of that tower to middle of this tower. So then another 10 there and another 10 there. So about 120, and then so is that 70, 75 to negative 41, whatever that is. So you know it's about it's a little longer this way. So it's probably about 100 and this is 120 that's probably about 130 140 so yeah pretty big uh in comparison here's the village and here's here's my original house and that fix fits in one section of the roof and one tower so yeah you know you can see here uh, deep caesar's castle and his area too that he he's been working hard on that getting his stuff going uh, but yeah he wasn't on i think most of this weekend and i got pretty much all this built this weekend using the builder's wand I'm pretty obsessive about that and completing it. Uh, so yeah, I spent a lot of time doing that. So let's fly back and do some Thalmcraft stuff here. If you're wondering why I'm flying, is because I'm a little low on power and I'm using my kinetic generator to power me. So let's go ahead and dump this stuff back off that I don't need on me. Okay, so Let's go ahead and swap out to my magic suit. Shift right click. Um, I don't need that there. Let's see. And we, we are going to make... Uh, let's see. Let me get some stuff together for the magic and I will be right back, guys. Hey guys, welcome back. And I've gotten some stuff here ready. Uh, as you can see here, I've put in some... Uh, skulls around the base of my infusion altar and what these do is it decreases the instability so if you were to look at the instability or the recipe for this it says the instability is moderate um, and what that does is it uh, there's a chance for things to go wrong during the ritual of stuff so when you put these little items on the table as I'll show you a little bit later uh, instability has a chance of the items flowing uh, flying off the thing or you know other bad stuff happen so what these little um, 
things do or decrease the likelihood of that happening. So I've placed all these things in in kind of a symmetrical pattern and I kind of got that stuff going. And I've also gotten some uh, stuff distilling in my alchemical thing here. As you can see here, I'm uh, distilling various things. Um, I've got some coal going, which has potentia and ignis. So I'm going through each one of those and grabbing them up and then putting them in each of these hoarded jars here uh, and filling these up because I will need various aspects for the ritual as you'll see here whoops didn't want to do that as you see here <laughs> uh, you need for this particular infusion recipe you need six orum and 12 potentia so I've been using the alchemical furnace to break down various items uh, I got a selection of items here. I've got the ethereal essence for Aurum, uh, some dirt for earth, uh, arrows for air, uh, coal for potentia and ignis, uh, sugarcane for water, uh, cobblestone for pedidio, and quarried block for ordo. Um, just kind of picked random things that I had in my inventory to make uh, the stuff that I need for the wand that I'm going to make. So I kind of wanted to show you Oh, and I guess I also got some uh, shards for the magic. Although I might, excuse me, I might change that out actually for the great wood logs because those are a good source of uh, magic essence. Uh, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and finish uh, filling up these shards with the stuff that I need, and I'll be right back. All right, guys, I am back, and I got all my aspects in the jars, and we should be ready to do our first infusion ritual. So according to the book, it, for this, we need to put the aspects kind of laid out like this. So we will go ahead and give this a shot. Like, like a so, like a so, and like a so, and like a so. And I think, I think I, le I messed my wand and I'm not fully in my gear. But I don't think, I don't think that matters being in my suit, but I will go ahead and do it just in case. I do move a lot slower without that on regular regular Minecraft speed. Um, okay, so I think to do this, you just go up here and you click it. Yep. And it will start drawing Essentia from the tubes. Just like that. And during the ritual, you'll see the items get consumed. So it looks like, look like it's already consumed the item. And I can go up here and click it. And I now have a charged Thaumium cap. So we're going to do that one more time. And I will be right back. All right, guys, I am back. And I have made my other Thaumium cap. And I got everything laid out for the uh, Great Wood Wand ritual, as you will see here in the book. I got the Salus Mundus, one of each of the shards, and the Silverwood Logs. And I got nine each of the primal aspects along with Precantatio uh, in the jars ready to go. So I got 16 of that, so I should be good. 48, 56, uh, 32, 16, 16, and 32. So I should be all set. Let's see what happens. Now doing this, this looks, this is probably one of the coolest things I've seen so far in modded Minecraft, other than, uh, no, I think this is probably the coolest thing. Uh, I don't, that's one of the things I wish this uh, mod pack had in it was Arge Magica as well. I think that would be kind of uh, another cool thing to help balance out. I mean, I know it has blood magic, so I can't say for sure if that's another a cool thing to have in here um, to go along with Thomcraft to kind of have the both the, the tech and the magic, but there's a lot of tech in this, and you know, why not have three major magic mods? Or maybe they're just not compatible. I don't know. But it looks like we're all good. It's draining the things. So I should have a wand here. Ta-da! Just like that. Now, I think now that that's done, I should be able to go upstairs. Let's see if I can run a little bit. Let's speed this up, because I know we're about at the end time here. I take that like that, that like that, and that like that, and do that. No? Hmm. Like, 
like that. Like that. Or maybe I don't need a... Oh, no, it would go like there, wouldn't it? Hmm. What am I missing? Silverwood wand core. Yep. Did that. Huh. Let me figure this out and I'll be right back. Alright guys, I'm back. And I'm not sure what I was doing wrong, but all of a sudden I put this in this pattern and now these are showing up. So I'm not sure what was going on. It's kind of... Looked around a little bit, I'm like, what else am I missing? And looked through the book and I just kind of moved, took this stuff out and put it back in and all of a sudden showed up. Uh, so if you'll know, if you notice, when you put this in, you're at, these are the 54. So this is what I was t telling you about earlier is that you really need to make, um, number one, you know, have the better, better wand, but also have your suit on so you get the 10% discount. And that's very important. Uh, so once I put that in there, I'm at 48.6. So that's pretty good. And just like that, ta-da, I've got now my thalmium based Silverwood wand. Awesome. And that's the best one. And that's pretty much gonna be it for today. Um, I'm gonna see if I can't uh, maybe play or tinker around with maybe making a few other things. Uh, probably maybe the uh, researching the wand recharge pedestal. I definitely want to go out and get uh, if uh, where is it on here? Is it artifice maybe? There's something that allows you to transport nodes. Um, where is it? Can't find it. Is it here? Yeah, node in a jar. So what the, you basically just enca uh, encapsulate a node uh, around some, make, kind of make a big giant jar around a node, and it allows you to capture it. I think there might be another way to do it. Um, I think if I see it in here, um, there is oh, the diamond dolly. I thought there was something else, like a mover, DNA enchant mover, block, yeah, block mover, random things. I think this allows you to move a node as well. I, I, I'm not sure. I think I read somewhere where it does that, so I might try using that too. If so, I'm definitely going to be using that and getting moving some nodes downstairs uh, to the Thumbcraft area because I don't want to be flying around everywhere to recharge 100V every time I make something. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you have any comments, feel free to leave them in the down there um, and whatnot. Please leave a like if you did like it. And until next time, see you later.